Senate Judiciary Committee Chairman Chuck Grassley, rather, asking questions of a panel of experts, law professors, former top administration officials across a number of different administrations. Questions now of that panel from a number of panelists, uh, members of the Senate Judiciary Committee, Sheldon Whitehouse being the next to start asking questions. We're going to jump in with some questions of our own, though, with Shan Wu. He's a former federal prosecutor, former counsel to Attorney General Janet Reno. Shan, good to see you here on the Law and Crime Network. We really appreciate your expertise on this. Oh, good to be here. So what do you make of some of the uh, latest discussions that have come out of this hearing? We have concerns about expansion of presidential powers. Are those fears relevant? Are they real? Should we be worried about Judge Kavanaugh getting onto the Supreme Court and basically giving the president carte blanche to do whatever he wants. I think we should be worried because I think an important thing for our viewers to understand is the Supreme Court is so much more different than other courts, even at the Court of Appeals where Judge Kavanaugh currently sits. At the Supreme Court level, we're really asking the justices to interpret the Constitution. I mean, theoretically, all the judges are doing that, but they're much more constrained at the trial level and even at the Court of Appeals level. So when we're talking about interpretation, it's not simply putting the law into like a little box, turning the handle and the answer comes out. It really has to do with what they bring to the legal analysis, what their interpretation is of the Constitution as a living document. So that's what makes this such an important process, is trying to discern what goes on inside the particular nominee's mind, how he approaches things. And that's why there's so much controversy over, of course, his opinions, but probably more importantly, what he has written in terms of his work uh, at the Bush White House and as an advocate, because the opinions are going to be, you know, very carefully crafted, and they are not likely to reflect kind of his free thinking as much as his work papers. I agree. Look, that's a great point because a federal court of appeals judge is pretty high up in rank, but a federal court of appeals judge is still an ide ideological follower. A Supreme Court judge is an ideological leader. And that distinction is critical, so I'm glad that you brought that up. What did you make of John Dean's statement? This guy was Richard Nixon's own counsel in the White House. He said that he has pretty serious questions about Judge Kavanaugh's honesty. That's a pretty high charge to make, but this brings us back to the topic of what exactly is in those White House papers. Yeah, I think, you know, Dean, obviously a very compelling figure uh, since he took a stand against President Nixon. And uh, it certainly is an unusual situation to have this much uh, work papers being withheld. And I think it would be very helpful to see them. I think the difficulty here is in looking at the judge specifically within the prism of the Trump administration, everyone's view is somewhat, somewhat colored by the fact that there's a concern that you know President Trump may be impeached, there may be subpoenas. So it's a very real situation to everyone that the Supreme Court might make a critical decision, much like in the Watergate era. And when we look at that, I think the thing that gives me the most concern is the standard take on the presidential power was one of limitation, meaning that he could be subpoenaed. That's really why Nixon stepped down. And I think probably for a time in his career, Judge Kavanaugh was of that same ilk. But he changed that with that law review article. And it's almost as though, and I don't think this is too preposterous, I mean, it's almost as though he was getting ready for his possible... Yeah, let's, let, let's continue the conversation when we come back in just a second. We have to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Back with more questions there in the Senate Judiciary Committee of former White House attorney during the Nixon administration, John Dean, asking about the lasting impact of the way Watergate transpired and whether or not the same thing could happen this time around if the investigation into the 2016 election by special counsel Mueller continues and if it tees up a constitutional question that could wind up in the lap of nominee Brett Kavanaugh. Shanlin Wu, former federal prosecutor, former we counsel might not. to Attorney General Janet Reno, still with us here on the Law and Crime Network. We're seeing this theme come up again and again and again. It, it seems that John Dean is the uh, perhaps key witness of the day, or at least uh, the scariest, because so many Americans, uh, whether they were alive for it or studied it,
know about the issues of Watergate. That's right. And I mean, there couldn't be any uh, better witness to history than Dean uh, during the Watergate era. And I think he's certainly sounding uh, the alarm in his low-key manner that we have to be very concerned if the Supreme Court is going to be too pro and too protective of the executive power. And what you and I were discussing before that last break is this idea that Judge Kavanaugh in his law review article that the senator just alluded to uh, seems almost to have been setting himself up um, for this role, wanting to make sure that it was known publicly that his views were very pro-presidential power, thinking a president should not be subject to being investigated, not be subject uh, to depositions and civil cases while they are sitting in office. And certainly reasonable minds can differ on that. I mean, one can imagine a scenario where you would not want the president bogged down with you know tons and tons of suits. But at the same time, I think we're all very concerned not to give any particular president a carte blanche that they can do whatever they want with no consequences. And, and it's probably more in the minds of people at the moment because of this president and the amount of controversy that's going on where it seems like even his own staff seems to have some concerns right now. Yeah, exactly. Of course, we then heard the rest of the, bud wor the buzzwords here, so things such as, uh, you know, no president is above the law. We heard that one at one point in this. So, you know, how hard is it to actually drill into Judge Kavanaugh's actual thoughts, given that oftentimes these things turn into re a regurgitation of the old talking points that we've heard time and time again, which are indeed ambiguous? I think it's not hard in this instance to uh, infer what his viewpoint is on presidential power. Uh, it's clear he is in favor of it. He doesn't think the president should be disturbed uh, during their term. Now, I think the more difficult question is whether that means he's in some way not qualified to sit on the court. I mean, in terms of the academic and professional resume, is unquestionably qualified. To Certainly. Serve. Uh, so as we try to get into his mindset, it again comes back to the question of interpretation. And honestly, that becomes a, a purely political issue. And I don't mean politics just as in sort of bickering between two sides, but the political process of selecting a Supreme Court justice, the Senate Judiciary Committee is inquiring into his mindset and trying to determine whether they're okay. Or not. Look, the majority power, uh, the majority party is indeed in power and has the majority vote here. That, that's not a surprise. Look, you filled some big shoes legally in your career. What's your overall view of this process? You've watched a number of these confirmation hearings go down. How does this one stand out to you and where do we go from here? I think my view is that over time it's really evolved into such a carefully scripted, sanitized process that it's very rare to really get behind the curtains. I think there is a unique opportunity here because, again, the amount of work papers that he has. And, and I have to say, there are some things that have concerned me personally, you know, as a minority, some of the things he said about Asian Americans were not said, you know, not repudiating um, a case about the Chinese Exclusion Act, uh, the op-ed he wrote saying that he didn't consider um, the Native Hawaiians uh, to be an indigenous community. Uh, it's kind of ironic he was talking about how he does not live in the bubble, uh, but those statements seem <laughs> as though he's living in a bubble. So I, I think there are some genuine issues here in terms of what's been hidden in terms of the work papers and whether they might indicate that he has uh, tried too hard to perhaps even mislead or pull the wool over the uh, Judiciary Committee's um, inquiries here. And uh, on, on we wonder. So Shanlin Wu, former federal prosecutor, former counsel to Attorney General Janet Reno, we really appreciate your expertise here on law and crime. Oh, nice to be here. Thank you, Brad. We are going to be right back after this quick break with more live coverage of the confirmation hearings for Judge Brett Kavanaugh. We'll be right back.